Yes, sir. Okay, great. Okay, so since Iram was not there in the last class, Devangi, would you like to do the honors for your batchmate and give a quick summary of the last class? The concepts basically? Yes, sir. Yeah, great. Let's begin. So it's a very straightforward. So to begin with, it's a very straightforward chapter with few concepts. Uh, so till now we have just touched upon the few concepts of hormone and glands, and then we went on to just know which which is the fact part to know the the hormones and their functions. So this is mostly factual. In today's class, we will be touching upon other concepts, which is how these hormones act as a chemical messenger and send signals inside the cell. Okay. So that part will be done today. Yes, uh, let let Yusuf and Jani also join. Okay, they have joined now. So you can start, Devangi. So hormones are basically non-nutritive chemicals that act as the intercellular messengers. They are produced from endocrine glands in trace amounts, that is very less quantity, because they just do the work of signaling. Endocrine glands means, uh, endo means inside, crine refers to secretion. Here it refers to secretion of hormones and glands are uh, that secrete something. So uh -huh. endocrine glands sec uh, secrete into uh, directly into the blood vessels. So they are ductless glands. And uh, exocrine glands secrete outside the source of synthesis through ducts or pipeline. Correct. Then we have human endocrine system. Uh -huh. Yes, we have. Let me let me go down screen. Yes. Continue, Devangi. So we have uh, nine organs associated with the human endocrine system. First is hypothalamus, that is present in the forebrain. Then pituitary gland that is below hypothalamus in brain and pineal, pineal gland in the brain. So these three are present in the head region. Then we have thyroid and parathyroid gland in the neck region, thymus gland in the thorax or the chest region, pancreas in abdomen. Uh, pancreas has dual nature, some part acts as endocrine that secrete pancreatic juice and some part acts as uh, exocrine gland. Then we have adrenal gland that is again in abdom abdominal region and uh, it is present at the top of kidneys. Yes, that's why they are called adrenal on the renal. Renal means kidney. And then we have uh, one pair of ovaries in the lower abdomen in females and one pair of testes in males. Uh, it is present outside the abdominal cavity in the bag-like structure called scrotum. Yes, correct. So if you remember it, if you um, just um, classify it like this, the glands, the endocrine glands in the head region, neck region, thorax, abdomen, and lower abdomen and outside the body cavity, it will be easier for you to go from top to bottom and chances of missing on an, a gland is less, okay? Great, yes, continue, Devangi. Then we started basically with, I, I gave you, I, I told a basic uh, structure because you don't have to read and uh, remember every line of NCRT. So for every organ, specifically for your exams currently, school exams, you have to know certain main key points, which is for every gland, you have to know the overall function. If it has an overall common function that it achieves through multiple steps, you have to know that. Then it's location, the kind of hormone it secretes and their hormones function because hormones can have very different different functions, but they may, come, they may be coming from the same gland and the mechanism of action, okay? So these three things we have to do for every uh, endocrine gland. That was the homework given in the last class to do it for the left ones that we could we, we could not cover in the last class okay but let's start uh, yes devangi over to you so first is hypothalamus its overall function is to regulate the pituitary gland it is located in the basal part of forebrain 
and we have two types of hormones secreted by hypothalamus releasing hormones and inhibiting hormones releasing hormones function is to stimulate the secretion of pituitary hormones for example yes. growth hormone releasing hormone ghrh and gonadotrophin releasing hormone gnrh yes inhibiting hormones inhibit the secretion of pituitary hormones for example somatostatin that inhibits the secretion of growth hormone it is also called growth hormone inhibiting hormone ghih yes so yeah so basically if you pay attention so hypothalamus is there to kind of give a on or off signal to pituitary okay so and apart from just giving a on or off signal or to continue and express more uh, signal to pituitary it has other uh, functions as well it acts as a center to you know um, take care of our uh, other cent uh, other activities in the body including Uh, fever thirst like we discussed in the last so hypothalamus is a part of brain so in the neural uh, circuit also i told you some functions of hypothalamus correct and some were that it was a regulatory center for fever thirst and hunger correct yes sir but that was uh, not always happening through um, so that was not happening through hormones per se uh, but through the neuronal uh, control neuronal uh, signaling yes continue then mechanism of action or release these hormones are synthesized in hypothalamic neurons and are secreted from neurons and yes. uh, they basically reach the pituitary gland uh, there are two lobes of pituitary anterior lobe and posterior lobe so for, uh, to the anterior lobe of pituitary they reach through circulatory system and uh, through to posterior lobe they reach directly through the neural network yes so one way to remember it is anterior pituitary start with a and you can say that adenohypophysis starts with a so anterior pituitary is also known as adenohypophysis posterior then will be known as neurohypophysis and the way i remember it if neuro word comes then they reach directly through neural network so the other way to reach is through blood system so anterior will be reaching through circulatory system okay so it's like domino effect i remember only a and a so anterior and adeno goes hand in hand if it is adeno and not neuro then neuro is the other one which is posterior and if that is neuro hypophysis it directly communicates through uh, with the hypothalamus through neurons then the rest which is left one which is the anterior adenohypophysis have the uh, the other available option which is blood circulatory system does it makes it easier for you to remember people yes sir yeah okay great continue then we have pituitary gland also called the master endocrine gland it is attached below the hypothalamus through a small stalk and it is located inside the bony cavity called cella torsica uh so we will do hormone secreted and their function by anterior pituitary or adenohypophysis and by posterior pituitary or neurohypophysis so by adenohypophysis the first hormone is growth hormone it is responsible for the growth of organs and tissues of the body over secretion of growth hormone leads to gigantism and uh, under secretion of growth hormone leads to dwarfism or stunted growth uh then acromegaly is a type of disease that happens due to excess secretion of gh in the middle age of humans that is 30 to 40 years and yes. uh, it leads to disfigurement disfigurement of body structure especially the face correct it is different from uh, gigantism because uh, like gigantism is not only for adult age and that affects the whole body in a proportion whereas uh, acromegaly basically affects the face okay. and then the second hormone is prolactin prl it regulates the growth of mammary glands and milk formation in females then we have thyroid stimulating hormone it signals the thyroid gland to release its hormones uh fourth is adreno 
cortico-trophic hormone ACTH. It stimulates the secretion of steroid hormones that are also called glucocorticoids from the adrenal cortex. So it yes. uh, basically regulates the adrenal gland. Then yeah. we have gonadotrophins. Uh, gon gonad means testes and ovaries. <clears throat> so uh, it is of two types, LH and FSH. And so you said we'll do their function in today's class. Yes, right. Just don't worry about the functions, but know that gonad because there are different gonads in male and female. And these gonads also secrete different hormones. But what is amazing, and again, uh, you know, coming back to the fundamentals of biology, uh, what, uh, what is interesting is that from the brain, the same kind of or the same hormones, LH and FSH, are secreted both in males and females, but they go on ovaries and testes, and um, which are completely different kind of organs. But there also the similarity is that they produce gametes. So they then signal the gonads to produce gametes and the other um, hormone tells the gonads to produce the gonadal hormones. So gonads also in a sense are dual hormones. They act as an endocrine gland because they also produce further more hormones like estrogen and testosterone and they also synthesize gametes. So they are gamete synthesizing also. Okay. So they also like pancreas is a dual, uh, where was pancreas? Up above. Here, just like pancreas, they are a dual, but here pancreas is dual in the sense, it is both a, a exocrine and a endocrine. I think, did you, did you include that Devangi? If not, yeah. I'm just telling. Yeah, okay, great. Yes, continue, let's finish it. Uh, then we have melanocyte stimulating hormone, MSH. Uh, mm -hmm. Melanocytes are the cells secreting melanin. So this hormone regulates the melanin producing cells and controls the pigmentation of body. Mm -hmm. Great. So that's okay. where we ended. Yes. Okay. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, the, about this melanocyte, one more thing that I, that I could not mention in the last class is that just you can make a star here. So this MSH, melanocyte stimulating hormone, it is secreted from a region of pituitary that is, that is not completely anterior and also not posterior. So the anterior pituitary, which is also known as adenohypophysis, there is another name which is called pars distalis. Okay. So just to... I don't want it to complicate that, but just know that it's also called pars distalis, okay? And the uh, the other one, the, the neurohypophysis is also known as pars nervosa. Again, to remember it's simple because it has nervous system contact direct. It's called pars nervosa. Now, between neurohypophysis and adenohypophysis, there is a middle region where these two lobes connect and that region is known as pars intermedia, okay? So melanocytes are actually, if you go into the detail, they are secreted from pars intermedia, okay? But it is not a lobe, it is the junction of the two lobes. There are only two lobes. So this pars intermedia is uh, in humans, it is almost merged with pars distalis. So we treat this uh, region which secretes melanocyte stimulating hormone as a part of pars uh, distalis only, okay? Because in higher mammals in, and in humans, there is no third lobe or there is, that region is not very distinctly different. It is just at the junction, okay? So you can see only two lobes, pars, uh, pars distalis, and pars nervosa. Pars intermedia is not a lobe, it is the junction between the two. And we consider it mostly in pars uh, distalis because it does not have a nervous connection with the hypothalamus, it has a blood connection with the hypothalamus. Make, make, make sense, people? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay, great. 
so what we'll do in today's class is because uh, whenever there are uh, factual paragraphs the what how i proceed is i give you the template so this is a template you start with gland location or overall function location hormone secreted and their functions and mechanism of action of release so what i'll do uh, yusuf and janiya can you can you both talk will you be participating in of course sir yes, yes yusuf sir. can talk great that's great so what i'll do is i'll assign one gland to each of you okay and then and then i'll give each of you because after uh, pituitary uh, but let me first yeah but uh, uh, all these glands are mostly one paragraph and not very very long ones so i'll give you same time in in that time you have to read that paragraph and you have to fit points in this template so there'll be too much of knowledge sometimes like talking about very small small minute things you have to read it but you have to finally decide that what should i write in one sentence as the overall function of this gland so this you will do and will tell me and will keep filling it the location this is the easiest part hormones secreted and their function and if there is a mechanism of action or release given okay like in case of hair in case of um, um, hypothalamus it said that there are two different mechanisms one through the circulatory system other through the net neural network okay is it clear everyone fun right and because everyone is up for it devangi is thumbs up others piram chania yusuf because it has to be done in a democratic manner so chania is okay iram yusuf great so uh, let me assign the posterior so because there will be many so let's say posterior pituitary which we have not covered right so i give posterior pituitary to devangi i'm i'm because devangi will get one more organ one more gland probably so i'm just being a little less harsh on her because she also summarized so just a bounty point so uh, devangi you will talk about posterior pituitary then we have what do we have after that uh okay the pineal gland will be okay pineal gland i will do it has just one hormone i'm so sorry i'll do pineal gland devangi will do posterior pituitary then thyroid gland yusuf parathyroid gland janiya thymus iram let's do till here first okay and after that there will be four more and it will be equally divided great so everyone understood please say yes no something great so uh, let's take four minutes so in your copies make the same template for every thing the template is in front of you let me put the template yes this is a template written in black overall function location hormone secretion function and mechanism of action okay so you get 4 minutes 1 minute to make it and 4 minutes to read let's say 5 minutes and after 5 minutes we all will start telling each other so everyone will teach everyone one gland okay so time starts now just give me a confirmation that you all have started with the thumbs up iram has started sir yeah. yes devangi sir i mean posterior pituitary will uh, start from oxytocin yes that's what you have to read right okay because it's easy so will you take uh, devangi will you take posterior pituitary and pineal gland pineal gland has just one hormone so will you take it up yeah yes sir okay great i'm just shedding my load off okay so your time starts now people by clock 5 minutes that also will tell you how to understand faster
Okay, so Devangi is done. What about others, people? So it's <clears throat> five minutes are over. Is everyone ready or anyone wants a couple of minutes? Iram is done. Jani and Yusuf, are you decided upon your points? Yes, sir. Jania? Done. Okay. Let's 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 begin then. Great. So so if, like you are the teacher, I'll help you writing the thing. So we are starting with posterior pituitary, right? Yes, sir. Yes, Devangi. So let's say posterior pituitary. Okay, what do you want us to know about it then? You're the teacher. So what is is there any overall a single function for posterior pituitary that you could come up with? So there are different functions. There are two different functions. It's okay. So we can then go to the next thing, the location. So uh, location is the same below hypothalamus as it is a lobe of pituitary gland only. And, okay. So uh, below hypothalamus. And the same, it's in the same cavity and it is the posterior lobe, right? Simple. Yes, sir. Correct. And let's go to hormones secreted then. Hormones and the function. So uh, yes, the first hormone is oxytocin. It basically... Oxytocin stimulates the contraction of smooth muscles okay stimulate the contractions of smooth muscles okay so uh, in females at the time of childbirth it helps in the vigorous contraction of uterus and milk ejection from mammary gland great right so whenever we need a smooth muscle contraction uh, we can send oxytocin hormones and if that those muscles or those organs have oxytocin receptors, they will respond in effect to the signaling of oxytocin and they will contract and relax okay, vigorously. So childbirth, the push to release the child from the womb uh, help, uh, it happens due to oxytocin. Oxytocin also helps in sending a feedback to the brain that how vigorous the contraction is like there are there are reports that suggest that and allows the female uh, in a in a way to bear that pain okay kind of masking that pain from the brain and also in in case of milk ejection that is initiated by a suckling effect so when um, the babies start start sucking on the female memory glands in order to feed on the milk from their mothers. So this signaling is more and milk is released from the, from the uh, milk forming glands known as uh, the, the milk glands. Small, small milk lobes, the glands which are present in the memory gland, the, the breast. Okay. So great. Yes. Prolactin also does the same work, right? Prolactin, uh, no, prolactin uh, initiates the formation of milk, not the release. So the formation, which means colostrum, whatever chemical composition it is, it needs to be formed by mixing many things, right? So formation is prolactin. It initiates the formation of milk in the memory gland. So before a female is pregnant and before a female delivers a child, the memory glands of the females are well developed. But the production and synthesis of milk colostrum in that female memory gland is not happening okay yeah okay yes the signal comes up from childbirth so from childbirth all onwards parturition onwards lactation begins and females in that phase when they are producing lots and lots of milk that is very energy taking on the female body so biology is very very synchronized and it's a beautiful system so when lactation starts the menstrual flow stops. So that's called lactational amenorrhea. When mothers who have given birth, freshly given birth to the offsprings, when they are for, for the next few months, 
when they are producing milk in very very large quantities for the babies they are not menstruating okay so they undergo uh, lactational amenorrhea stoppage of periods for a few months that's by prolactin okay but the release because that gland needs to contract and release the, those are smooth muscles right they, they have to release that milk also that is uh, signaled by oxytocin do you understand the difference yeah. you know okay. that's a that's yeah. a beautiful question thank you yes devangi so anything else for oxytocin no so uh, then we have the second hormone vasopressin okay vasopressin okay vaso pressin what does this do so uh, vasopressin basically stimulates the reabsorption of water and electrolytes in the dct of kidneys and therefore it reduces the water loss through urine water loss through urine okay so um, what should i write here stimulates reabsorption reabsorption of water stimulates reabsorption of water when would you like water to be reabsorbed from the from the kidneys in higher quantities when you have in water what, stress yes when you have scarcity of water suppose you are on a fast where you are not in taking water so there are many fasts that involve not taking water you know so right the like the like the uh, the ramzan fast right after one point of time throughout the day you don't drink water correct so when you are not yes. drinking water but your kidney is still filtering uh, things from your uh, uh, blood it is also filtering out water so after one point of time there will be the blood will start to thicken up because you are taking water out of it but not drinking water so this vasopressin signaling is very important because it has to tell the brain uh, sorry it has to come from the brain and it has to tell the kidney let's see Uh, whatever uh, water you are absorbing there has to be a reabsorption of that water back okay so that uh, the person does not undergo a uh, dehydration so if there is a uh, it is also known as therefore vasopressin is also known as uh, if i am uh, adh the full form is uh, anti diuretic hormone if am i correct yes sir so it's anti diuretic because it if there is a malfunction of this hormone then what happens is your water will not be conserved and there will be lots of water loss from the kidneys and the person will dehydrate fast and sometimes um uh, it happens in diabetes condition so there is a specific condition so one is diabetes mellitus you know where the blood glucose level uh fluctuates so there is lots and lots of glucose which is in the blood that's called diabetes mellitus and there's another kind of diabetes called type 1 diabetes insipidus so diabetes insipidus is where this adh is not working instead of in there it was another hormone insulin here it is another hormone adh it's not working and blood loses lots and lots of water make sense everyone yes sir so when you know so when i started when you are fasting and not drinking water your vasopressin signaling saves you okay great so everyone has written everything okay so i think it's devangi only for the next gland which is the pineal gland right devangi you are also doing the pineal gland yes sir okay great so tell me about pineal gland any overall function sir i mean again there are many functions yes but there is an overall function of the body uh, of the pineal gland it regulates our sleep wake which means our circadian rhythm the 24 hour rhythm of the body yes sir okay regulates the 24 hour rhythm so every organism on this planet has one thing in common 
depend slightly fluctuates on different regions but in general one day on earth is 24 hours and there is certain period of light and certain period of darkness in that one day correct so every organism has a fixed rhythm throughout the day okay in nature so this pineal gland regulates the 24 hour rhythm also known as the circadian it is not the only gland which regulates it it is one of the glands that regulate it okay the circadian rhythm of body yes tell me so what yes yes Hiram. so this will change uh, if the person is migrating from one country to another yes this will change this will fluctuate this will not change your sleep wake cycle obviously changes but it takes some time to adapt to the new situation new condition that's why we get jet lag have you heard of this term jet lag jet lag people who travel long distances on on a plane from one continent to another when they reach there they get jet lag so what they do is they sleep during the the day and they wake up during the night and it takes some time for them to come back to normal with respect to day and night activities they will start feeling hungry at very odd hours they will start sleeping at odd hours in the beginning that's called jet lag uh, do you understand this people have you heard of this right yes sir yeah do you know why 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 that happens what is associated with traveling that it happens any any it's simple if you just pay attention to the traveling let's say i'm going from india to united states so what's what's going to happen suppose i took a flight from india at 8 am in the morning i just woke up got ready i woke up at 6 got ready reached the airport took a flight at 8 or 9 okay then what what will happen i had a normal rhythm to begin with which was set the moment i will land in us my rhythm will be just all off why any it is because it's we are yeah sorry yes rhythm? because we are we, i'm in the indian rhythm is, is that what you said sorry yeah. I, yeah so what is the indian rhythm i think there's just so indians have a different rhythm so rhythm is regulated by light and darks i told you it is regulated by the day the clock so it is because we are flying across time zones so when you fly from india in the morning what it was already in us when you started flying night night, night. so after traveling for 19 hours let's say 16 hours okay let's say so from 8 in the morning my body when spending 16 hours in the flight in mid air where it's okay so after 16 hours my internal clock my pineal gland will understand that now it has to be night right because from eight o'clock in the morning 16 hours is 12 o'clock in the night yes or no yes sir. but when i will land in us it will be day midday yes because there it was night when i began so after 16 hours there will be midday there yes make sense people yes yes sir. So, this, so when i will land my circadian rhythm is all haywire because my body will not understand what is happening after 16 hours it should be light it should be dark conditions and i should be sleeping but it's broad daylight and i'm not hungry but i have to do lunch okay but i'm also hungry because i traveled so there will be fatigue and there will be you'll feel sleepy so you will sleep the moment you will get down your body would like to sleep okay but you will be sleeping in their daytime so for few days you will be offset offset it will take time and ultimately your body will adapt to the new conditions new day and light cycle and everything will come back to normal okay make sense yes sir yes yes sir. so tell me devangi what glands uh, what hormones are we going to sir uh, is circadian the same as diurnal rhythm is the day and the night rhythm yes 
it's also so called the... light dark cycle it's also called sleep wake cycle yes sir location of pineal gland is uh, in the dorsal side of forebrain correct so first location location dorsal side of forebrain okay okay yeah. then and the hormone secreted by pineal gland is melatonin melatonin okay remember that it's don't confuse it with melanin melanin is secreted from different it's from the cells in our body that are melat melanin secreting cells and the signal for that comes from an um, um, anterior pituitary pars intermedia to be very specific but we consider it in pars distalis only but this is melatonin the hormone and melatonin does what so uh, first function was this one regulation of 24 hour rhythm yes so you can say regulation of sleep wake cycle right you can also write here melatonin secretion increases when there is dark so the moment you get dark cues so humans have really uh, kind of you know messed up this whole thing because we do not get dark signals when there is dark in the nature because our cities are lit up right now you are sitting in your rooms and, uh, and i'm sure that it's dark outside right it's dark outside but your room is lit so your eyes are constantly getting light signals but for any other organism in the wild it is already dark and their brain is secreting lots and lots of melatonin and they are sound asleep but you are awake taking classes studying for your future you know bringing a difference and so because when we will go to sleep when we will switch off the light close our eyes then melatonin will start secreting in our system and that will put us to sleep so dark elicits melatonin secretion when there is again light the next morning the melatonin secretion will decrease and that will you will be ready and active for work so people sometimes who find it difficult to fall asleep or have issues sleeping or are have insomniac tendencies uh, or their sleep wake cycle is disturbed and they cannot fix it on their own so they just lie on the bed and wait for uh, sleeping and they cannot sleep so doctor sometimes suggest that uh, take a, a, a melatonin strip and keep it on your tongue or take a melatonin supplement right that will it, it's dissolvable like on the tongue and that will give some hormonal rush in your body the signaling and you will fall asleep faster okay but i'm not very i'm not 100% sure how much does that work from the the outside melatonin because over time any hormone you start giving from outside your own system kind of gets addicted or dependent on that but i think for melatonin there are ways where it's not addictive and you do not depend on that melatonin but yes that is how that therapy works okay so our body temperature so you know that uh, our body temperature our blood flow uh, uh, is both are related to our sleep wake cycle there is a reason why most of the heart attacks while sleep while sleeping in elderly people uh, occur during the early hours of the day or late hours of the night okay because that is the time when our heart like just before we wake up our blood pressure is the highest okay our body temperature is the highest towards the evening two or three hours before we sleep so that is the point uh, where we have the highest body temperature all our tissues have worked up to their capacity and now they want to go to rest so all these rhythms are maintained through sleep and wake cycles which is just i want you to know okay so melatonin increase uh, regulates body temperature sleep wake cycle also influences metabolism because if i ask you to start getting up at 1 in the night and start eating will you feel like eating will you enjoy the food at 1 in the night even if it's your favorite food yes no what no sir no right 
because you are you are not metabolically you don't you are not expecting your metabolic metabolic system your digestive and metabolism to be working very very actively at that point of time you should be sleeping your body should be in a state of um, subconscious state your mind should be in a subconscious state your tissues should be repairing etc etc okay so it also regulates um, metabolism it also regulates pigmentation our immune system because sleep is very important component to modulate immune system so when you are sleep deprived or when you are starved in both the conditions our immune system uh, goes down okay so a sleep deprived person has a low immunity or a starved person a food deprived person also has a low immunity okay and it also regulates menstrual cycle so when we are stressed not sleeping properly our sleep is not proper the melatonin secretion is also up and down and in females it also affects the menstrual cycle so it has multiple roles okay but in a in a nutshell you can say that it regulates your day to day diurnal rhythm of the body okay cool so now we come to thyroid gland who was doing thyroid gland I think uh, Yusuf. Yes, I was doing it. Yes, Yusuf. So over to you for thyroid gland. Tell us. So I hope you are writing everything down because I am not um, putting it everything here. I'm I'm like I'm utilizing the time to discuss and tell you things. So please keep writing. Yes, Yusuf. So let's start with: Is there an overall function? Um. Yes. It. it just plays an important role in growth and development of human body yes so it plays a very important role in both physical and mental growth and development of human body okay mm -hmm. yeah so you can write down the overall function is it plays a regulatory role in physical and mental growth and development growth hormone only affects the physical growth of the size of organs everything like that thyroid glands regulates both yes so location um, it, uh, it surrounds the front of the larynx so, yes yeah. yes so it's it's present um it's present around the what should i write here larynx larynx right yes sir it's uh, so surrounds the larynx in the neck region cool and then um it secretes two hormones mm -hmm. which it secretes two hormones yes first one is and the first one is uh, tetra 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 auto thyronine Yes. So the word tetra means force, mm -hmm. tetra pack four. Iodo means iodine related, and thyronine is the hormone. Hormone. Okay. So tetra, which means four. Iodo means there are four iodine molecules, and thyronine is the hormone. So tetra iodo thyronine, also known as T four. Correct. And the other one is let's write the other both first. Other one is uh, the other one is uh, triiodo thyronine. Tri triiodo. So there will be nine. two. Yes, triiodo thyronine. So nice. it simply tells you. You can tell me what does it tell you? Uh, yeah. It has three iodines, right? Tri, same hormone. Like similar hormone, but only three iodines, so that's called T three. Okay, now let's talk about functions. Yes, of. Um, yes, and <clears throat> so the first hormone, tetrahydrothyronine, it uh, increases the rate of chemical reactions in cells and helps mm -hmm. growth control and development. Okay, and the other one. um the other one 
the, the other one it uh, the body's metabolic rate heart and digestive function muscle control brain development and maintenance of bone yes yeah, so basically uh, actually between t3 and t4 the point is that only one is active and the other is not active do you know which is active t4 is it there is it there in your uh, ncrt Am I audible, people? Yes, sir. Yes. So I was saying that T uh, three and T four. One is called uh, triiodo, other is called tetraiodo, which means you have to add one iodine to triiodo to make tetra, or remove one iodine from tetra to make tri. Okay. So which is uh, functional? T3 or T4, which is active form, which is so these two hormones don't work differently. To be very like uh, you should know it, it is mostly produced in the form of T4, which is considered the inactive form. That's why I've written here first. So please write it down. The T4 is the hormone which is produced. It is inactive form. Both are thyronine. And then T3 is considered as the metabolic, like the, the active form, which does everything that uh, Yusuf has mentioned. Okay, so if it's not there, please just know it. T3 and T4, you have to cleave one iodine to make uh, it active. Okay, so T3 is the biologically active hormone that the body can use for signaling and bringing all, bringing all the changes. So instead of these two hormones playing different roles, the hormone plays, thyroid hormone plays a plethora of roles, but it is produced as T4, which is inactive and then gets converted to T3 and is stored in the body. So if you do a, anyone has done a thyroid profiling or anyone in the family has gone, gone, gone through a thyroid testing, people? No. Okay. So what will happen is if you see that the T4 levels are high in the body, but the T3 levels are very low in the body, which means the body is producing the hormone, but it's not getting, um, it's not converting into the active form. There also you will have deficiencies of this hormonal action and you will see effects, symptoms on the body. On the other hand, if you see the T4 levels are low itself, then you cannot expect the T3 levels to be functional at all. And for this formation and conversion and of this inactive to active form and produ production of T3 and T4, TSH sends the signal from the pituitary. So sometimes what happens, T3, T4 uh, are not, both, are, both levels are low. So you might go to see the TSH level. Is it the TSH level that is causing the problem? So then you need to provide TSH to the body and TSH in a proper amount will tell the thyroid to produce these hormones. So in a thyroid profile, T3, T4 and TSH all are um, measured. Make sense? Yes, sir. So if there is less of thyroid, active form of thyroid in the body, it's called hypothyroidism. Okay. And uh, in that, the thyroid gland enlarges. So hypothyroidism causes goiter, where the neck is very, very um, fluffy and it swells up. It's not actually swelling. It is enlargement of the thyroid gland itself in hypothyroidism. Okay, write down. Okay, and it happens uh, during, it happens due to multiple reasons. But if it happens sometimes, uh, if a woman is uh, pregnant with hypothyroidism, that will not only affect the woman, but also affect the development of the growing baby. Because this hormone goes from the mother's body into the baby's body till the time when the baby is not, uh, has not formed its own thyroid gland and 
does not start secreting this hormone on its own so if a pregnant female is hypothyroidic so the baby will also suffer from all the hypothyroidism related symptoms like the growth will not be proper the mentally the baby the brain development will not take place and uh, the baby can be deaf by birth or mute by birth because these organs won't develop okay is that clear everyone it's clear yes. sir yeah also the, on the opposite hand if it is hyperthyroidism now in what cases do you think thyroid thyroid gland can start producing more thyroid because hypothyroidism is common you can understand that maybe tsh signaling is faulty or uh, there is there is <clears throat> deficiency of iodine in the body so even if tsh some uh, formation is normal so if you do a test and tsh came normal but still you don't have active thyroid uh, in the body active which means you don't have t3 t4 in the body then the chances is that you are uh, iodine deficient so the doctor will say that okay increased iodine in your diet okay and then things will come normal if you have uh, but if you have more t3 and t4 in the system hyperthyroidism when can that happen any idea that can happen if there is a tumor either in the pineal like which is so more tsh is being produced or in the thyroid gland itself so some some kinds of cancers of thyroid gland or tumor in the thyroid gland can lead to hyperthyroidism that is also not good because anything which is excess or deficient will ad, uh, affect the body adversely so in hyperthyroidism also there is problem in the body physiology and there also the enlargement happens of thyroid gland so in both cases enlargement happens even in hypothyroidism enlargement is there so one is called goiter other is called exo exophthalmic goiter okay it's called exo exophthalmic because the ophthal word is for the eyes so in this goiter the two two different types of goiter goiter due to hypothyroidism and goiter due to hyperthyroidism has one difference if along with swelling of the neck or enlargement of the neck or this gland if the eye balls are also protruded out like your eyes ophthalmic region is gouging out it's called it's because of hyperthyroidism so that's why it's called exophthalmic goiter your eye balls are protruding out so big big eye balls you see in a person okay in this case because this hormone regulates basal metabolic rate if this hormone is deficient there will be gain of weight you will not be able to metabolize so in hypothyroidism keep writing these points in hypothyroidism there is gain of weight the person becomes obese and cannot um, uh, metabolize the fat or lipids or carbohydrates in the hyperthyroidism it's opposite you your metabolic rate increases so much that you will just burn and break down everything you know weight will start you will start losing weight and uh, it's known as graves disorder figured out and characterized by grave it's called graves disorder is that clear everyone yes sir yeah so i'm so sorry yusuf i did i explained everything but um, thank you no issue sir anything else that but you are forgetting one thing you said it only uh, thyroid glands only secretes two hormones it's not true there is there is one more, more. oh yes there is one more which it secretes it's called a uh, calcitonin because it's coming from thyroid it's sometimes in books known as thyrocalcitonin but it's called calcitonin in general so this hormone is also released from the thyroid glands and it has a different function it regulates blood calcium levels just like insulin regulates blood glucose level calcitonin the name only suggests calcium so it regulates blood calcium level okay so right. you you used one you give you gave one symptom let me connect your symptoms with this so you said that bone development is affected if thyroid gland is not working properly 
So that is not because of T3 and T4. That is because of this thyrocalcitonin. So if you have more calcium in your blood, it means you have less calcium in your bones. Yes or no? Same like in insulin, in, in diabetes. If you have more glucose in your blood, you have less glucose with the cells. So your metabolism is affected. You will always feel fatigued, hungry, and your body will not get energy. And if you have too less calcium in the blood or too less sugar in the blood, you have more in the cell. So your bones with too much calcium gets calcified and becomes stiff. And with too less calcium, they are more prone to fracture, getting fracture and they don't develop properly. So this thyrocalcitonin regulates the blood calcium level and keeps your bone density proper. Okay. Got it. Great. Okay. Who was doing parathyroid? Just in connection to that, I think Jania was doing that. Right, Jania? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, great. Let's begin with parathyroid. Uh, so the overall function is that uh, uh, it regulates the calcium balance in the body. Yes, correct. It regulates calcium balance. Okay. How is it different from thyrocalcitonin then? Like just a quick question. Because it affects, it regulates the calcium ion levels in the whole body, not just in the blood. Okay. Our cells also need calcium, right? Neurons need calcium, other cells need calcium as a cofactor. Many enzymes need calcium to get activated, not just the blood and the bone, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Tell me. So, what should we write about this? The um... location? Yeah, uh, at the location, uh, it's in the backside of the thyroid gland. Yes, so we call it, which backside means? The dorsal side, right? Or, yes, sir. Or the frontal side, which side? The dorsal. So it's towards the back means it's, it's near the esophagus. So the windpipe is in front, the food pipe is behind it. So it is more close to food pipe than to windpipe. Okay, it is not close to trachea, it is close to esophagus towards the back. Okay, so back side, or you can say dorsal side to thyroid gland. And both of them you cannot distinguish. Once you open the neck and do autopsy, you will not be able to distinguish which is thyroid and which is parathyroid. We just know that they have different hormone secretion, they look similar and together they give a butterfly like effect so on the neck you will see that a butterfly like organ will be covering the trachea and the esophagus but on the basis of what they secrete they are different yes so what does para that's why it's called para it's parallel to thyroid gland on both sides so parathyroid gland and what does it secrete uh, it secretes a peptide hormone called as parathyroid hormone Yes, it secretes PTH, parathyroid hormone. It's a peptide hormone, which means it is it is protein based in nature. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, and its functions are that it increases the calcium level in the uh, level in the blood. Uh, yes. It stimulates bone reabsorption. Uh, and then it increases the calcium absorption from digested food. Yes, so as I told you, it regulates circulation of overall calcium ions. So calcium needs to come into the blood from food and then needs to go into the bone from blood. So this whole pathway throughout the body from digestive system to blood, from blood to bone, from bone to cells, from cells to uh, enzymes that need it. That all is done by parathyroid hormone, which is uh, PTH. Okay, anything else? Um, it's uh, hypercalcemic uh, hormone. You forgot one thing. It also regulates, not just in blood and bone, also regulates the absorption, um, sorry, uh, reabsorption of calcium from kidneys. Okay. Just like ADH, 
facilitates reabsorption of water from kidneys when required so this if this hormone uh, is not um, playing the role properly so the blood calcium level increases and your bone calcium level decreases and also in your kidneys the reabsorption will not happen and you will be more prone to kidney stones okay reabsorption of calcium ions from renal tubules renal word is for kidney okay is that clear janya that's good great yes sir yes anything else uh no that's it okay great so overall calcium balance is with parathyroid hormone and thyrocalcitonin helps parathyroid hormone because it's secreted by the neighbor thyroid hormone okay is that clear everyone so did you like the exercise people yes sir okay so so let's do it for one more round and i think it will be over so this time i'm just uh, allocating so i'm allocating so, timers yes you know i was doing timers okay you you are already doing timers yeah so iram is doing thymus uh, let uh, devangi do adrenal okay is it okay devangi you don't have to worry about the cortex the layers don't worry just remember the hormones the cortex and all the layers and all you have you can study for uh, neat but not, not important in that much of detail for the boards okay yes sir devangi yeah so adrenal to devangi and then pancreas is with yusuf okay yusuf yes no is there yusuf are you there are you am i audible to you i don't know if yusuf can receive me jani are you there yes sir Okay, so Jania, you take pancreas then. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah, and then we will be left with testes and ovary, and we'll see if you so responds. And it's okay. So again, so I'm giving five minutes. We have to do the same exercise. Read and let me know the important points. And your time starts now. Okay, give me a thumbs up, everyone. If you have started, those who have started, give me a thumbs up. Ira. I'm done. Okay, already cool. So, uh, would you also like to then uh, take a test serum because we have time? So in that time you can prepare for that also. Then I'll take yeah, up okay. the ovary. Okay, cool. So let's start. Was oh, Yusuf is not responding, so I'm not sure if he is able to hear me. Okay, so time starts now.
Uh, so wind up people, just one more minute, couple of more minutes, okay? So done, everyone. Bangi, Hiram, Chania. People, are you there? Yes. You left? Okay, Hiram is there. <laughs> I thought you left. Okay, great. So one of the downfall for doing this exercise is, you know, you can leave and I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, thymus. So Hiram has done thymus. So Hiram, tell us about thymus. So we will dictate and people keep writing so that we can cover this part. We have some less time. Uh, so Kiram, yes. Tell me first, yes. the location. Is there an overall function for thymus? Um, yeah, it plays a major role in development of immune system. Perfect. T lymphocytes come from thymus. That's why they are called T, T for thymus. So it plays a major role in immune system uh, development. That's the overall role. The location? Uh, located between lungs on ventral side of aorta behind sternum. Yes. So sternum is the center piece bone on which the ribs are attached on the front side, on the ventral side of our body. And it is located beneath the sternum and on the which side of the aorta? Ventral side of the aorta. Ventral side of the aorta, which means in front of aorta and beneath the sternum behind the sternum and between the lungs, exactly in the center. Great. And uh, what it's are the hormones? It's a hormone called as thymosin. Thymosin is the first, yes. Thymosin, it secretes. And what does it do? Uh, it plays a role in the differentiation of T lymphocyte, which will Perfect. produce. Yes. So it gives, it, it helps in differentiation of T lymphocytes and T lymphocytes are responsible for cell mediated immunity. They are also called T helper cells because they help the B lymphocytes to produce antibodies. They themselves do not produce anti antibodies. So that's why 
we cannot say that T lymphocytes give humoral. Humoral means blood-based. So T lymphocytes do not give directly the blood-based immunity, but they give the cell-based immunity, cell-mediated immunity, where cell recognizes, our immune cells recognize a foreign particle and destroys it. But the secretion of antibodies happens from B lymphocytes and these thymosins helps in that. Okay? Great. Yes. And anything and else you should know as, about? Yeah. No. And as age increases, the production of thymosin will decrease. And this is why the immune response of an old person uh, decreases. Yes. So immune, so immune system is like it comes, it sets, and then the organ goes away. So you cannot pump your immune system in old age. So whatever immune system you built during your uh, adolescence and your teenage and your childhood, that is the that will stay with you. So that's why kids at a very young age should not be overexposed to um, bad food, processed food, pollution, and should not be overexposed to uh, bad habit, bad hygiene, or lethargicity. Like they should not be obese. So once their immune system sets, because in, in if you think that in old age you will increase your immune system, that's not going to happen very likely because the pineal, uh, sorry, the thymus gland uh, becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, and, and and it becomes weak and degenerates in old age. Okay, great. So these were the points for um, thymus. So who's doing adrenal? Ivangi. Yes, sir. Yeah, what do we need to know about adrenal? Again, the same template. So any overall function? Sir, it uh, releases emergency hormones in the case of stress. Yes, so it first it is divided into two parts. You have to say that, okay? So there is an adrenal medulla and cortex. Cortex in biology is always the periphery, the boundary of anything. If I say cell cortex, I mean the boundary of the cell. If I say uh, adrenal cortex, it is the boundary of the, the periphery, the outermost part of the adrenal. If I say cerebral cortex, mm. last chapter, now, do you remember prefrontal cortex, cerebral cortex, because it is the outermost part which you touch. So anywhere you touch on your head, you are touching the uh, cerebral cortex, correct? So cortex means periphery. So that's the adrenal cortex and medulla means inside, adrenal medulla. So yes, now you tell me. So we have two adrenal glands and uh, location is at the interior part of each kidney. Yes, so at the, uh, you can also say at the top, at the anterior means towards the head. So anterior of each kidney or um, top head of each kidney, it's like a cap to the kidney. So that's the location. Now coming to hormones. So you have to tell me about cortex specific hormones and medulla specific hormones. So what does cortex do? What is the function of cortex and the hormone? So can I tell medulla first? Yes, yes. Tell the medulla first. Okay. Anyways. So adrenal medulla secretes two hormones, adrenaline and noradrenaline. Adrenaline yes. is also called epinephrine and noradrenaline yes. is norepinephrine. Yes. They are Both coming are... from adrenal. So that's that they're called adrenaline or noradrenaline. Okay. Yes, and epi means epidermis. Epi means top, outside, or nephron, nephridia, nephric, anything which is like nephrine, it means kidneys, okay? So renal or nephro means kidneys. So adrenaline and epinephrine means the same thing. On the top of renal, adre adrenaline or epinephrine on top of kidneys, okay? Cool. Yes, continue. So both are hormones of fight or flight. That means that they are secreted in emergencies in response to stress. And uh, yes. they increase alertness, sweating, heartbeat, yes. heart contraction, and rate of respiration. Yes, you, you can, you can uh, re uh, remember it like this. They are not just uh, fight and flight. They are fight, fright, and flight. So if you are scared, 
if you want to fight and if you want to run away in all this you need your body very alert okay so if we are scared of a threat then we need to see everything so our pupils dilate okay so that more light can enter into our eyes we are alert ready to run all our hairs like the goosebumps which you call they are pilo erections they are the erection of the hair follicles the fine fine hairs because we want to sense everything that so hair what these hair are for sensing the touch so we want to sense everything in terms of touch our auditory strength increases we hear everything clearly our pupil dilates so that we can see everything clearly because there is a uh, there is a threat around us which we constantly want to monitor our breathing rate increases because we might start running at any given point of time so we need more and more oxygen in, more oxygen in our lungs and heartbeat increases because blood needs to be pumped to every uh, part of the body so that we can burn glucose and make energy so fight flight and fright triple f hormone comes from medulla yes what about cortex uh, adrenal cortex releases corticoids which are of two types glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids a uh, glucocorticoid yes. example is cortisol mm -hmm. yes um, mineral corticoid example is aldosterone aldosterone correct so gluco as the word says glucocorticoids it stimulates gluconeogenesis the word gluco means glucose neo means new and genesis means formation so new glucose is formed in our body under the effect of glucocorticoids lipolysis lipo means lipids lysis means breakdown proteolysis so whenever we need to break down lipids and proteins to form energy that happens through glucocorticoids okay yes sir and uh, cortisol yeah. is involved in the uh, maintenance of cardiovascular system and it also produces anti inflammatory reactions that suppress the immune response yes it also stimulates the red blood cell production correct you uh, just have to remove uh, remember red blood cell production that's important and one more thing uh, aldosterone because it's uh, you said mineralocorticoid it's a mineralocorticoid so one mineral which is very important for our body is sodium and potassium so sodium and potassium are very important for our nervous system right so aldosterone helps in the maintenance of electrolyte balance in the body okay so it doesn't it, it take it checks and balances that we are not losing too much of salt which is like sodium chloride because it has sodium and also we are not losing too much of potassium chloride because it has potassium okay yes sir yeah and then and there are cortex yeah. also uh, secretes androgenic steroids that play a role in growth of axial hair pubic hair facial hair correct yes that's that's good so you both you have made good points and then finally about the anatomy there they can be the cortex can be divided into three layers reticularis fasciculata and glomerulosa so that is not very important but you should you can still just know okay just see what is important is hormones and its function <clears throat> and its function in this part okay so um, let's do one thing because we are out of time already so we'll take Uh, Janya has already prepared pancreas, right? Janya, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. So let's take it in the next class because Janya has prepared pancreas and Iram has prepared testicles.